The coronavirus is upon us and at the moment getting worse every single day. What do they say? History repeats itself, in all senses of the phrase, just under different circumstances. What's up everybody, I am Shelby Nave. welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about viruses. Given the fact that there is a nationwide quarantine and the fact that I haven't been able to touch a roll of toilet paper that wasn't sent to me from my mom, it's pretty clear that COVID-19 has had a pretty significant effect on society. Especially since it's already claimed 80,000 lives at the time of filming this and counting. But did you know coronavirus is not the first aggressive virus outbreak? And as of right now, it may not even be the worst virus that humanity has dealt with before and lived to tell the tale. It's very interesting to me right now the way people are reacting towards coronavirus. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. People have been acting as if the apocalypse has showed up right to their front door, overloading themselves with supplies in preparation for the worst. This isn't a part of the topic that we're going to be talking about today, but just please, please, please be mindful when you're going to the store and getting supplies for yourself and your families because now there's a lot of people who are going without because a few have gone to the store and bought everything up. Like I said, toilet paper has not been a thing that I've been able to get my hands on in the past month via store. Every roll of toilet paper that is in my house now has been sent to me by my mom or a family friend. So please just be mindful. Only take what you need. Be nice to the grocery store people, your doctors, your nurses, all of that. They're working really hard. Now there are a lot of different viruses that have broken out over the years. I'm only going to be talking about a few. And just to be clear, we will be talking about pandemics, meaning that these diseases have spread worldwide and not epidemics that are specific to one area of the world. I try my best to always fact check myself. If I say something in this video that you don't think is accurate, please nicely let me know in the comments below. We are all here to learn. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. The Black Death. 1346 to 1353. I promise this is the furthest back in history that we're going, but I wanted to start off with this virus because A, it is considered to be probably the deadliest virus in history, and B, because it was the event that invented the term quarantine. The Black Death took place between 1346 and 1353 and is believed to have originated in Asia and likely made its way to other continents like Europe and Africa via fleas living on rats, which commonly accompanied merchant ships. You see the this all throughout history. Merchant ships, rats, they're best friends. The illness killed up to 200 million people and wiped out over half of Europe's population. Now wait, it is very important to note that back then the people genuinely just did not have the medical knowledge, the medical assistance that we do today that likely would have prevented a lot of these deaths. But it's definitely the illness that has the highest death count that we'll be talking about today because 200 million people, that's a lot of people. People at the time had no scientific knowledge of contagion, but they did know that it had something to do with proximity. Eventually, European ports made it mandatory for newly arriving soldiers to be held in isolation for 30 days, just to prove that they were not sick. And as time progressed, the forced isolation eventually turned to 40 days, or a quarantino, if you will. Quarantino is the origin of the word quarantine, and that's the event that started its practice all throughout the Western world. The Black Death was, of course, an extremely devastating event and completely changed the course of Europe's history. With so many people being dead, it became much harder to find labor, which meant that surviving workers ended up getting higher pay for their labor and also better access to quality bread and meat, ultimately improving the standard of living. Some people also think that the lack of cheap pay ultimately contributed a lot to the technological innovations that Europe had in years to come. The American plagues, 16th century, primarily talking about smallpox. Oh, the discovery of America, something that is often romanticized to see like not an awful part of our history. Your school textbooks probably told you Christopher Columbus, he sailed the ocean blue in 1492 to discover America. That's not entirely true, but that's a different story. When Europeans set sail in discovery of the new world, they didn't just bring their livestock and their various crops with them. They brought guns, they brought steel, and they brought germs. The Europeans brought over all sorts of diseases, including smallpox, that the native people of modern day Mexico and the United States 
states had absolutely no natural immunity to these illnesses. These illnesses majorly contributed to what ultimately ended up in the collapse of the Aztec and Incan empires. One source that I read said that 90 percent of the indigenous people living in the area during that time were killed off by disease and also mass extermination from their homeland getting taken over by settlers. Disease was definitely the Europeans' invisible weapon that they may not even have known that they had. What's up guys, Future Shelby over in editing here. I just wanted to pop in here because upon further review, not only were Europeans aware that they were carrying all of these diseases and bringing them over to the New Americas, but they were consciously using them to uh, ruin people's lives. They were purposely passing the virus along. I read an article that mentioned how Europeans were giving Native Americans blankets that were infested with smallpox. So yeah, it was still an invisible weapon, but they most definitely knew that they had it so just putting that in there but this completely wiped out native american armies and defenses making it much easier for europeans to conquer their territories truly so unfair if someone wanted to take your house from you the house that you've lived in and all the generations before you have lived in and you have to fight for it but you are so deathly ill from the viruses that these same settlers brought to your front door do you think you would win in this fight no and neither did they obviously a true story of I want this thing that does not belong to me, and I demand that they give it to me, or I will kill them because I can. It's a lot easier to conquer native lands when you significantly outnumber your opposers because you already killed them all with your nasty germs. Anyway, smallpox is actually one of the first diseases to completely get wiped off the face of the earth because of a vaccine. In 1980, the World Health Organization, or WHO, announced that smallpox had been completely eradicated from the earth, which is, of course, comforting. The third cholera pandemic, 1852 to 1860. There have been seven cholera outbreaks over the course of the years, but the third pandemic was considered to be the most deadly. Like the first and second pandemics, the third pandemic originated in India and spread through Asia, Europe, North America, and Africa, killing over one million people. Originally, it was believed that this disease was spread through contaminated air. However, British physician John Snow began investigating hospital records and morgue reports to create a a geographical chart of the outbreaks and came to the belief that the disease was perhaps lurking in the drinking water. He even convinced officials to remove the pump on the Broad Street drinking well, a very popular city well that most people went to for their drinking water. And little by little, the cases of cholera began to decline. Cholera is mostly eradicated from most countries, however, is still a persistent threat in most third world countries, especially those who don't have access to clean drinking water or adequate sewage. The Spanish Flu of 1918 to 1920. The Spanish Flu was one of the most deadly flus to ever hit the world, infecting almost 500 million people worldwide and killing about 50 million people. The spread of this illness was majorly heightened because of the cramped living conditions and poor wartime nutrition that soldiers had during World War I. And despite the fact that the name is Spanish Flu, it likely didn't even start in Spain at all. However, people falsely believed that it originated in Spain and the Spanish flu just ended up sticking. The illness was said to have killed up to 25 million people just in the first 25 weeks alone. The reason that this flu virus was more significant and more deadly than other influenza cases in the past is actually because it was killing a lot of young, healthy adults with uncompromised immune systems. Typically with influenza, like coronavirus, the people most vulnerable are children, the elderly, and people with compromised immune systems. The Spanish flu, however, had a significant impact on completely healthy adults, leaving most kids and the elderly completely unscathed. Super weird. I am not a doctor or an expert by any means, but if I had to guess why this would be, I would say that perhaps the elderly may have already been exposed to a similar strand of influenza and had built up somewhat of an immunity to it or at least partially to it but as for kids not really being affected that one really throws me through a loop i don't 
really understand how that would be the case just because you would assume that children having lived the least amount of time would be the most vulnerable to new diseases. But I really couldn't tell you exactly why the flu took out the victims that it did. If you have an idea, leave it in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious. The HIV and AIDS pandemic, talking mostly about when it was at its peak between 2005 and 2012. HIV and AIDS is a huge virus pandemic that has taken over 36 million lives since 1981. The illness was first identified in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1976 and quickly traveled throughout the rest of the world. One source I read said that HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, likely developed from a chimpanzee disease that got transferred to humans in the 1920s in West Africa. Obviously, there have been a lot of efforts put into place to bring awareness to HIV and AIDS. And between 2005 and 2012 alone, the global deaths for HIV lowered from 2.2 million to 1.5 million, which is still a lot, but it's an improvement. For a long time, this disease had absolutely no cure. However, there are many people today living with HIV and AIDS because of medication that was developed in the 1990s, which made it a lot easier for people to manage their symptoms and to have a normal lifespan. However, now in 2020, apparently there have been two people who have been fully cured of HIV. I think in years to come, you will eventually start seeing the cases of HIV slowly decline, and hopefully at one point we'll be able to get them completely eradicated from the earth, like smallpox, for example. It truly is kind of amazing the progressions that we've had in medicine, if you just like look at them via a timeline, it's nuts. H1N1 swine flu, 2009 to 2010. This is the one that I think that most people my age, older, maybe even a little younger, actually remember happening because it was affecting a lot of kids and your mom was probably freaking out about swine flu. H1N1 originated in Mexico in 2009 and rapidly spread across the world infecting 1.4 billion people and killed up to 575,400. So clearly not the deadliest illness that we've talked about, but it's still nuts the amount of people that had it. 1.4 billion? This flu primarily affected children and young adults and 80% of the deaths for people who are 65 and under. This again is very interesting because most flu viruses, including your seasonal flu, tend to cause the most deaths in people who are 65 or older. However, this flu targeted mostly people 65 and under. This again is likely because people 65 and older had already been exposed to some other type of strand of H1N1 or like the group of those viruses and had already built up some sort of immunity to it. Hence, we're not affected very much at all. There's now a vaccine for the H1N1 virus that causes swine flu. It's included in your annual flu shots, so make sure to get your flu shots. All right, you guys, but that is all the viruses that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video of me kind of taking you through a little bit of the history of virus outbreaks. I know the world is a little scary right now, but if we all stay strong, stay healthy, stay safe, we will all get through this. Like I said, this isn't the first time something like this has happened in our world. If you like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you head out. And if you'd like to hang out with me in between uploads, I've linked all of my social media. You can go give me a follow if you want. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you the next time I upload a new video.